Jimmy's guarantee finally came to fruition as after failing to predict the previous two, the butler and his troops showed up in Game 7, avenging last year's miserable ending with a dominant start to finish W. It's now evident that this interview last year from Butler We had enough um, next year, we will have enough, and we're going to be right back in the same situation, and uh, we're going to get it done. Was a That's So Raven type moment, as the Heat indeed got back to the very position they were in from last year, freakily playing Game 7 of the Conference Finals against Boston on May 29th of 2023, exactly one year after playing Game 7 of the Conference Finals against Boston on May 29th of 2022. Only difference was, they were on the road, but it must be an even sweeter victory for this Miami fan base and organization, given last year Boston eliminated them in this scenario on their home floor, and now they just did the same thing to the Celtics on Boston's home floor. Heat Nation, stand up, as your team is going back to the finals for the second time in four years, and just won the franchise's seventh conference championship. Stay tuned for how Boston and their fan base utterly came up short, and what makes the heat smoke in that Celtics pack most satisfying for fans in Dade County, and why the heat are now within striking distance of their organization's fourth championship since becoming a franchise in 1988. Right quick, please subscribe and turn on notifications to help your boy reach 100k. You would join the amazing mere 14.6% of you watching that have already done so. Back to the content. Boston was settling for contested, unreliable deep-range shots, while the Heat trusted each other on every possession, not playing hero ball. What a sad effort this was from the Celtics from the jump, as this is on Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, and Joe Mazzulla for getting complacent, as I tried to warn them not to be. Blame your boy D-Flo as the scapegoat all you want, but with all due respect to Boston fans, who were solid in Game 7 at the Garden, Heat fans have consistently shown more love on these videos than y'all, which says a lot considering the Celtics were in the midst of a historic comeback. As I said in my last video, titled the Celtics better watch themselves, I had a feeling Miami was going to win this Game 7 battle, and as I said in my previous Boston video before that, titled the Celtics can't get complacent, doing what 150 teams had failed to do in the past would require a different level of focus. Both those videos, combined, tally less views than my One Heat video from last week after Miami won Game 3. That Heat video, by the way, had zero dislikes on it up until I checked just now where it has one. Heat fans loved and believed in their team. My question is, where were Celtics fans when their team needed them most? Because it shows up on paper that in large part, Celtic fans displayed a lack of belief in their team. Conversely, Miami fans deserved what they got, a big fat revenge W. With that said, it's not the fans' fault that Boston wet the bed in this one. The Celtics were settling for contested shots well beyond the paint. They weren't trusting each other. They were playing hero ball, while the Heat were getting swift movement, sticking to their game plan to run it through Butler and attack the defensive weak point after Jimbo collapsed the defense, and to their credit, Miami's flurry of undrafted phenoms were knocking down bombs. Whether it was Gabriel Namdi Vincent, Duncan Robinson, or this game's undrafted star in Caleb Martin, these mans were performing like top lottery picks. MVP, however, was Eric Spolstra, whose adjustment to increase his team's pressure on the perimeter staggeringly held Boston to merely 84 points on the night, which was the third lowest point total from any team throughout the 2023 postseason. What a sorry, sorry performance it was from the Jays, specifically Jalen Brown, who turned the ball over eight times. Just disgraceful stuff. Maybe instead of those pool workouts, the man JB needs to work on his damn handle. I swear, I can handle the ball better than this man. It will be a long summer for Brown, who's now eligible to sign a five-year, $295 million contract. But if you ask me, after that Game 7 performance, he's not worth a dime of that money with all due respect. Smart, Tatum, and Brown are labeled as an elite big three, which I've been guilty of calling them, but the trio was outscored by three undrafted players in Robinson, Vincent, and Martin. 
Caleb Martin was massive in this one with 26 points, 10 rebounds, shooting 11 for 16 from the field, making four of his six triples. And also from the warm Miami perspective, greatest Raptor of all time, Kyle Lowry, is proving Toronto's front office should have taken his free agency in 2021 a lot more seriously. K. Lau is actually on the path towards proving he was almost as important as Kawhi Leonard was in my Raptors 2019 championship run. Lowry's bothersome energy, his pesky hustle, and his title-bred mental fortitude was an impact which was felt to the utmost extent in a winner go home. Kyle even pulled up for a dagger from the midi down the stretch, which helped seal this one. He would finish as a game high plus 26 on the night, repping Toronto to the best of his abilities while wearing a Miami uniform, of course. We miss you, Lowry. Fred Van Vliet's negative energy makes us miss you even more. Moving on though, and Jimmy freaking Butler ultimately proved himself to be the best player in this series, showing up for a flawless 28 piece which came along with seven boards, six dimes, and three steals. And while the opposing Tatum and Brown combined for 10 turnovers, Butler committed only one TO. Massive shout out to Duncan Robinson, who chipped in a crucial 10 points off the pine and made up for missing two wide open shots that would have won Miami the series in game six by draining daggers down the stretch in game seven. Everyone on this Heat team just knew their role that much better than Boston's players did at least in this last game. Boston would literally just cross half court, run a basic pick and roll, or just have a dude isolate, then chuck up a shot. Whereas Miami realized the moment 10 times more effectively, committing to collapsing the Boston defense, finding shooters on the perimeter, and most crucially, after getting kickout passes, their shooters didn't just settle like the Celtics were doing. They were driving again and either pulling up from the mid range or swinging it again, after Jason, I'm humbly one of the best players in the world, Tatum, unfortunately would roll his ankle on the opening possession, he was extremely slow to rotate to Miami shooters. Combined with lackluster closeouts, there was something about not merely Jason's physical health, but his mental toughness to lead his troops as the number one guy that was really off. The tunnel vision fueled Jimmy Buckets didn't have that issue whatsoever though. Outside of Jimmy, it's again Eric Spolstra that deserves the brunt of the credit for Miami. This guy has time and time again proven why he's one of, if not the best coach on the planet, with his upbeat willingness to inspire his guys no matter what. If you didn't see my last Celtics video where I showed you his mentality after losing the game prior, I'll leave it here. At this time right now, I don't know how we're going to get this done, but we're going to go up there and get it done. And that's what the next 48 hours is about. There's been nothing uh, easy about this season for our group, and so we just have to do it the hard way. Uh, we wish we could tip this thing off right now. Right now, we want to tip this thing off. And let's play another 48 minutes, but we'll wait 48 hours. Boston had and, the perfect uh, opportunity to make history, and they evidently didn't take those 48 hours in between games six and seven seriously. They fought so hard to get back in this series, only to give a completely uninspiring, treacherous choke job of an effort with a chance to make history when it mattered most. Sad stuff, as for the second consecutive year, Boston fans, your team has choked on the biggest stage. It'll be a long off season, but we'll see what happens in Celtic land. The narrative has for the time being, however, shifted in Miami's favor, so we'll have more reaction from their absolute Game 7 obliteration on Tuesday. Thanks for watching and tuning in. This was Deep Flow, and I'll see you next video.